Another match down and another draw in the books for the Philadelphia Union, this time in the Lone Star State. We break down the club's 2-2 draw in their first ever game against Austin FC. Plus, we look ahead to their longest road trip of the season set to take place this weekend. That and more as Union Insider starts right now. Daniel Gazda takes the strike on and it's off the inside of the post. It's up the Argentine. Oh, brilliant. Since Martinez fires. Go! Hey everyone and welcome back to another edition of Union Insider presented by Independence Blue Cross. I'm Marissa Pilla. As always, I am joined by two Union legends, Sebastian Latou and Shannon Williams, who are both donning gray today. So is this kind of indicative of how we feel about the Union? Another draw on the books? I don't know about you, Shannon, but yeah, kind of, you know, the tie is always between. Not a win, not a loss, so kind of, yeah, feeling a bit uh, in this type of mood right now. A little wishy-washy right now. Absolutely. Let's take a look at what happened this weekend because the Union headed to Austin after suffering a 6-0 defeat to Pachuca in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. Guys, that's the worst loss in team history, so the boys in blue were really committed to trying to change the momentum around the team and pick up some much-needed points in Texas. Here's how it all went down at Q2 Stadium last weekend. Over the years, we've seen how resurgent Chip Curtin's team can be. And tonight, the hope to show that revival in the Lone Star State. From beautiful Q2 Stadium in Austin, Texas, it's the first ever meeting as the Philadelphia Union square off against Austin FC. All of us together tonight with a great response, okay? Let's end this trip now, which has been a long trip with our best performance of the year so far. Guys, we're at our best when we're a little bit me when we're a little bit nasty when we're a little bit in, in the other team's face for 90 minutes everybody does their job and we get three points there let's go come on everybody come on come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. let's go boys from the open whistle we need to be relentless team one three one two three otherwise it's overcast a little muggy 50 percent chance of rain 66 degrees we are north of downtown in austin as both clubs are coming off the of draws in mls play let's go right everybody know everybody White, that's all I ask for tonight. Fight for your daughters. Fight for the flags. Fight for the flags. No matter what it takes, to fight. The result will take care of itself. But everybody needs to give 100. percent All right, let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. We do three. One, two, three. We wait the whistle from Wesley Costa as the crowd erupts, and we are underway. Foul at the top of the box, outside the area on B row. He said short, leaves it off for Vodka from Elliott, and it's going to go off of Austin. Union saying it was a handball. Wait, down there's going to have the VAR symbol. It will be a point to the spot. A penalty's upcoming for the Union. It is a handball at Austin FC. Gazda take a couple of breaths. Starts his run. Pelts his leg forward. Scores! That's the Gazda we know and love. He smacks that penalty midway to the right of Stuver, who guessed wrong. Carranza plays it forward about 20 yards, sprinting with the ball, motoring forward to Sullivan with a couple of step overs on Biro. Plays a shot to the near post. Whoa. Rigoni laid off the Biro with a chance toward the byline, cuts it across the green. O'Brien lays it off to Rigoni with the shot. Oh, and sails high to the right of Andre. There's the halftime whistle from our referee, Wesley Costa. The Union with a good first half go into the locker room, up one nothing. To the side, a square pass over to Jimenez. It's a flex off of McLean through everybody, and the header's in for Austin FC and equalizer. Austin FC gets the goal, and the crowd erupts here at Q2 Stadium. Inside to Wolf. Wolf plays the cross inside over Ring. Chance at another goal. Gallagher scores to the left of Andre Blake. Went through everybody. That is back to back goals in a span of maybe a minute and 30 seconds. It's 2 1 Austin FC. Jimenez won back by Martinez from Jimenez. He has a runner in Harriel. If Jose wants him, gets it to Nate. Inside the box. Low cross off the stubber. Here's the one. It's a goal! Mikalua ties the game at two. That's the UA. We're counting on. It's another game here in Austin. Over towards Quinn Sullivan. 1v1 with Geller. A couple of step overs. So Quinn puts it across. Kick saved by Stuber. Moments. Second ball. Driussi. Left footed shot. Just wide. Oh, he had a 
chance in his 2024 debut. We'll see that full-time whistle. That will do it. In the 99th minute, the game ends. The third consecutive draw to start MLS regular season play for the Union, and they draw 2-2 tonight against the home side, Austin FC. Well, fellas, you know what they say, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Daniel Gazdag scores from the penalty mark. Uh, he put the Union up 1-0 at the time, but putting the ball in the back of the net was his job. But the buildup to that play was actually a big team effort. What did you see in the buildup to that foul? Uh, I think it was a very pretty serious you know, first half for, uh, for the Union. I think they were very well organized. They frustrate, you know, Austin who try, you know, to kind of break up this defense. I think they saw that the Union lost 6-0 during the week uh, in Pachuca, so they were thinking that maybe the defense were not going to be as good, but I think it was a, a pretty serious first half, and on the build-up of the Union, they took their time, they find their moment, and they were able to, to get a, a PK uh, and you know, great finish by Daniel Gazdag uh, once more time on the PK. So it was great to see them up 1-0, and uh, I think from all what they did in the first half, I think it was very, very serious team A4 from the Union, knowing that when you lose 6-0 to come back in a couple of days later to get a good performance like this, it was a pretty good first half. Yeah, they carried that 1-0 lead way into the second half, but then they conceded two goals in two minutes. What broke down defensively? Just a lapse of concentration, two goals that I think are preventable and something that Jim talked about in the post game as two little mistakes and, and those details they're, they're not getting right right now. So it's unfortunate as they had a really good first half, I think their best first half of the season so far. Seba talked about the, the turnover and what led up to that penalty, and I think that they just have not put together a complete game so far. So what do you think is the bigger headline in this game, the fact that they conceded two goals so quickly or that they came back and they got the equalizer? For me, I was looking to see what kind of energy they would bring after the loss down in, in Mexico, and I think they did a good job to come out of the game and, and to, to really press Austin FC. They, they turned them over several times and they were really getting things going. It's just they weren't able to sustain that. And again, it turns into just two little moments that they that they have a lapse in concentration and don't get things right. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I think it's just the fact that uh, they always come back. You know, they always have good reaction every game this year. They've been able almost to score all the time, but they give up every time goals as well. They just have one shot out against Pachuca in the Champions League. But other than that, I think the, the defense needs to get better to the small, the simple things to be together. I know it's like you defend at 11, but you know, the back four plus maybe Martinez need to really be on the same page to understand how to cover each other. I know there's a, a big turnover sometimes between Glesnes, Elliot and Lowe and the center back, but they need to do a better job. They were the best defense, you know, for a couple of years, but now I think every team knows the way they play and they need to kind of maybe re-motivate themselves to still, you know, come back to where they are as a team, as a defense to make sure that they got some clean sheets and they can keep a score and not always has to come back into the game. Right, because those first two games of the regular season, Andre Blake wasn't even available. So it was that back line that has a lot of familiarity with themselves, but a new keeper behind them. Where's your level of concern that the Union haven't won a game yet? Uh, for me, it's like in a, in a center backs. Um, I feel like between Glesnes, Lowe and Elliot, we don't even know yet who is the best pairing so far. I think everybody had a good game, some had a bad game. And when they had their only shot out this season, it was Nathan Herriel who played center backs. So it's kind of like to tell you who play you know, this position has a lot to do. And I think when Nathan Herriel played, he was didn't do this little thing, you know, very simple, didn't try to do any risk, didn't lose many balls, you know, in the bad area, who give a counter attack to the other team. So I think, you know, between Glesnes, Elliot and Lowe, they need to come back to those simple things who make them strong, think about defense first, and then I think everybody will go around. All right, Seba, I know you're missing Shannon, your buddy who stands to your left, but that's because he's over at the big board for this week's Play of the Week presented by Subaru. He's going to take us through that equalizing goal that got the Union one point on the road. Shannon, what do you have? I've got this week's play of the week, and this week it's going to be the equalizing goal that came in the second half for the Union. We'll play it through here. Martinez doing a good job of, of winning the ball back in the press, and then you're seeing the numbers get forward. You're seeing Nathan Harriel come forward, delivers a good low cross in the box. It takes a lucky deflection off the, off the goalkeeper, and it falls right to Mike Lua, who's in a good spot to finish. That gets the Union at 2-2, and then it was game on. They weren't able to get this, the third goal, but I think they did a good job of sending numbers forward. You're also seeing three players into the box, and anytime you get three players into the box, you're going to have a good chance to score. Michael Lua being in the right spot at the right time. 
Yeah, it's always good to get that equalizing goal and a point on the road. So we've got more Union Insider for you in a bit. But first, here's your Union trivia question presented by United Concordia. The Union have started the 2024 season with three straight draws. How many other seasons in club history have started with multiple draws? Find out the answer later in the show. We're back with this week's Tweet of the Week. Daniel Gosdog scored his first penalty kick goal of the season on Saturday night, and this fan was there to witness it. At Joe Mamba tweeted this picture and said, I'm so happy I got to see this live last night in reaction to Gosdog's goal, and we're happy that you were able to support the team all the way down in Austin. Welcome back to Union Insider presented by Independence Blue Cross. I'm Marissa Pilla. It's been an interesting start to the season for the Philadelphia Union. They advanced into the first round of CONCACAF Champions Cup before bowing out in the second round to Pachuca. And the MLS season hasn't been that much more exciting with three draws in their first three matches and another match having to be postponed due to weather. But there's still plenty to recap as club reporter Sage Hurley gives us the temperature of the team in this week's Union Roundup presented by Green Mountain Energy. What's up Union fans, I'm Sage Hurley here for this week's edition of Union Roundup. The Philadelphia Union started their Major League Soccer campaign with three hard-fought draws and they have another tough test coming up this weekend against Portland. But when they make the trip out west, they'll be without eight players due to national team call-ups. That means young faces will have the opportunity to step up as the team battles for their first league win of the year. Yeah, I'm ready. I've been practicing hard, working with the guys, and I'm ready to work hard and win one of our first games in the MLS. Yeah, it was definitely helpful uh, getting early minutes, uh, getting used to the guys on the field and having playing time. So I think I already have that uh, under my belt and moving on, uh, I think I can um, play consistently, uh, do well, help the team, and then hopefully we get a result on the road. I would say a lot of the players say have confidence because with confidence, you can really do anything and just take your time, be patient, and things will come to you eventually. And what are you most excited for, for these opportunities when you will get a chance to really step into a bigger role? Uh, I'm ready to score my first goal. It's been a while since I scored, so I'm looking forward to that. Winning with the team, getting those three points, and moving forward. Obviously, we have uh, players missing, um, but I think we still have quality, and we go there to get a result. We don't just go there to show up. Uh, we want to go there and get a result and uh, come back to Philly and play the next game. It's been cool. Uh, I enjoyed a lot of travel, um, a lot of exciting, exciting games. Um, yeah, cool, cool team, and I'm enjoying it. Uh, it's been amazing. Uh, I've had an opportunity to st uh, start one of my MLS games, but. It got postponed, but everything else has been perfect. Uh, learning as much as I can, it feels great. Like the staff and uh, players are helping me, and it, it's amazing. It's an experience that I would have never thought I would have. That does it for this week's edition of Union Roundup. Tune in next week for your inside scoop on all things Philadelphia Union. Always good to get the temperature of the team as we check in with Sage, but now it's time to look ahead as these guys give us the keys to the game presented by Subaru. The Union are headed out to the Pacific Northwest, to Portland. It's a great fan atmosphere out there at Providence Park. But what are your keys to the Union getting their first win? I mean, for me, it's going to be a very different game, this one, especially because we are missing eight players going to international duties. It's going to be definitely a different lineup uh, from Jim Curtin to put in Portland. And for me, my kids, to just for them to adjust into the environment. It's a different stadium over there. You know, you play on turf. It's a much narrower field, uh, kind of very different way to play. Shannon has been playing a few times over there, I did. And when you are there for the first time, and it's going to be the case of a lot of players who are playing for the first time in this stadium, you need to adjust very quickly, make sure you, know, you understand the environment with the fans. It's a pretty large stadium and not you know, being strong, be compact defensively, so then you can kind of go offensively and know and choose your moment to go forward. So for me, it's adjusting to the environment and the field for all of those new players who might play for the first time in Portland. As you said, Portland is such a unique atmosphere and the team really needs to manage that. Shane, and what will be key for you? My key to the game is going to be to utilize the wide areas offensively. We saw in the second goal in Austin that they were able to get Nathan Harriel forward and flood the box. If they can look to use those wide spots, Portland's given up a lot of goals on crosses, not only from corner kicks, but also in the run of play. So if they can do a good job of sending numbers forward, especially on the counter, I think that they can look to get some goals. We talked about that this might be the first time a lot of these union players might be playing in Portland. For both of you who've played in that atmosphere, what's your biggest piece of advice? Piece of advice, uh, I think, you know, 
play well for the first 15 minutes, no, I understand, like, it's going to be loud, you know, it's uh, one of their first games at home, they had a great, you know, first game winning 4-1 uh, for, for Portland, so they are confident at their own stadium, so if you kind of pass those first 15 minutes, make them doubt a little bit and then start to get some position into the game and being maybe dangerous in front of goal, I think you can doubt them. They have a very strong, you know, offense. We all know their defense might be their weakness as well. So why not you know, scoring some goals and being strong defensively? All right. Well, we're coming up on a break for Union Insider. But when we return, we'll tell you who on the Union was called up for international duty this week and what it means not just for them, but for the club in their absence. Union Insider returns after this. Time now for our Chick-fil-A Nugget of the Week. With his penalty kick goal on Saturday night, Daniel Gosdog became the first player in MLS history to convert his first 20 penalty kicks taken to start his MLS career. Wow, that is a lot of penalty kicks taken and to be able to convert them is pretty impressive. Welcome back to Union Insider presented by Independence Blue Cross. And when it comes time for international windows, clubs will often have players leaving for a week to represent the respective countries in whatever competition they're in. Surprise, surprise, the Union are no different. The team will be without eight players who were called up to represent their national teams in this international window. These include Daniel Gazdag for Hungary, Ty Baribo for Israel, Andre Blake and Damian Lowe for Jamaica, Jack McGlynn and Nate Harrell for Team USA Olympic Training Camp, and Jose Martinez and Jesus Bueno for Venezuela. So first and foremost, getting called up is such an honor, and Jim Curtin always makes a big point of allowing these players to go get that experience. What does it mean for these guys to go and be able to represent their countries? I mean, uh, I don't really know because <laughs> I never did in my, uh, in my entire life, so I can't really put my similar shoes, but if it happened, you, know, you were always you know, very proud to, to be able to, to wear the, the jersey of your own country, represent them in uh, international level, and, uh, and try to be uh, your best to, uh, to make you know, your country win. It's always uh, you know, a very proud moment, I think, for everybody who is able to join their national team, and it doesn't matter at which level, you know, Olympic team for Maglin and Ariel or uh, senior level for all of the other guys, it's, uh, it's always an honor and every time you get called up uh, you have to go yeah Shane and you had experience uh, getting called up so what's that like definitely been fortunate enough to play for the youth national team here in the US and, and it was definitely a great experience and something that I used throughout my career to, to help myself in my own game these guys should be praised for for getting called up it, it's not an easy feat uh, and they should be celebrated for it obviously it, it comes at a cost with having to miss a game and I'm sure those players like myself are going to be watching and keeping their eye on the score and seeing if the union can't get a result on the road. Yeah, it's great news for them. But for the union, they're heading to Portland without eight really important players, including starting goalkeeper, some really great players in the midfield, too. How do you think, Shane, and this is going to affect them in Portland? At the beginning of the season, we asked Jim Curtin to use his rotation, and he's being forced to do so this weekend. And it's a chance for these players to step up and to earn more minutes. We want them to earn Jim's trust so that they can start to see more minutes throughout the season, not just in Portland. Yeah, Portland is a tough place to kind of get your feet wet in the season, but kind of trial by fire. Who do you think is poised to step into some of these roles? It's going to be interesting. I, I think, you know, it's more in uh, offense. I think we saw Rafanello, you know, a little bit in Kansas City. I don't think uh, he had his best game offensively. We didn't see much about him, what he can do to help the team scoring goals. So hopefully he can maybe have another chance, you know, in this game, knowing that Gazdag is not going to be here. Depending on what tactics, you know, Jim Curtin is going to play, we can maybe see him on the field. And uh, I would like to see a bit more uh, from him offensively to see what he can do to help the team scoring goals and having probably Carranza and Ura with him on top. Getting that experience under his belt will only help him going forward. We've done plenty of talking about the union so far, so let's take a look at some of the action around the league in this week's Around the League presented by Torque. This is one of the crazier finishes you'll ever see in a match, and that's saying something when you're talking about MLS, but check this out. Kellen Acosta hits a cross in from behind midfield that catches the keeper off guard and sneaks into the net, giving Chicago Fire FC a 4-3 win at the absolute death. And speaking of Acostas, it was reigning MVP Lucho Acosta who gets the spotlight here as he hit home this low free kick that gave FC Cincinnati a 2-0 lead against the New England Revolution since he would hold on for a 2-1 win over the Revs. When Union Inside returns, Seba and Shannon will give us their players to watch for Saturday's match as the Union travel to Portland to take on the Timbers. Union Insider will be right back after this. Here's the answer to this week's Union trivia question presented by United Concordia. The Union have started the season with multiple draws two other times in their history. 2015 and 2017, the Union opened up their seasons with two draws each. 
This year is the first time that the number has reached three. All right, it is the final segment here on Union Insider presented by Independence Blue Cross. And if you've been around here for a while, you know it's time for players to watch presented by Allstate. Saba, as the Union go out to Portland looking for their first win of the season, who is your player to watch? To get the first win of the season, you need to score goals. So I'm going to go with the number nine, Julian Carranza. Surprise, I, surprise. Yeah, no, <laughs> so my favorite number, as, as you know. Uh, I think, you know, he didn't score yet in MLS. He got a beautiful hat trick against Aprisa in Champions League, but got a bit injured, came back last weekend. But I think we're going to really need him to take more chances and put the ball in back of the net. So I'm expecting to have a great game from Carranza and of course scoring one, two, or maybe three goals against Portland. Yeah, just getting three goals in Portland is no big ask for Carranza. What about you, Shannon? I'm going to go against the rules and pick two players. I'm going to go with the Union fullbacks. I think that both outside backs can do a good job to get forward in the game. We saw Harriel in the last game get an assist, and I think they can continue to get balls into the box and cause this Portland team problems. So high expectations as the Union head out to the Pacific Northwest. Uh, they take on the Timbers Saturday night, 10.30 p.m. on Apple TV. If you want to tune in to the radio call, Jonathan Yardley and this guy right here will be on 97.5 The Fanatic. For Shannon and Seba, I'm Marissa, and we'll see you next week.